Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here is in my sister and brother-in-law's basement. More about that in just a bit. Uh, welcome to our midweek follow-up to the weekend video. I call these stumped Q&A. These videos are visible for one week, then they become private, visible by channel members only. If you're curious about that, there is a link in the video description to get all those details. So yeah, uh, my bride and I, we've sold our home and have moved into an apartment while uh, we're kind of waiting for the market to cool down just a bit, hopefully. In the meantime, I, I did a, a space to work. So my sister said, yeah, I got a spot in the basement you're welcome to use. And uh, lo and behold, she not only cleaned it up, but she came in and threw some artwork on the wall, which totally thrilled me. Um, but we're here to answer the questions, comments, and cheap shots from two videos. The last two videos on the jigsaw, because I was moving last week, I wasn't able to do a stump Q&A. Uh, and what's interesting about that is there were only a couple questions from both that video, which was on using the ShopSmith jigsaw as a file uh, or a die filer. And the follow-up to that was using it with abrasives. So drum sanders and abrasive sticks and things like that. So let's just get right to the questions and the answers. Um, let's see, David said, do you have any recommendation on which files, shapes, et cetera, to order for a basic starter set? Yeah, well, first off, I, I think I mentioned the fact that they are very hard to find now, uh, but, but there is a supplier that sells them. They're not inexpensive. They're, they're gonna run you about $16 a piece plus shipping. Um, but I, I'll put my recommendations in the video description, uh, but, but what you're looking for is really gonna depend upon your use. Um, if you're using a scroll saw or a jigsaw and you're needing to go in and sand and touch up some details, um, there are some that are very small, very narrow. There's a teardrop one that I really like that's rounded on one edge, but comes to a very fine point and has two broad flat surfaces. Um, there's also a triangle. The triangle one is excellent, again, with three good sides on it, but also a very sharp corner that's tighter than a 90-degree corner. The round one's also a very popular choice. So, uh, again, I'll put a link. It's not an affiliate link. You, you can also keep an eye on eBay. They do come up there from time to time. But I think I've just answered the question. Those three are the ones I would use the most. Um, Glenn said, you may have misspoken when you said that the Power Pro low end speed was 100 RPM. I believe it's 250. And is that slow enough? Um, Glenn's absolutely right. The Power Pro, which is the, uh, the electronic variable speed head stocked on the ShopSmith Mark 7, can also be added to any version of the Mark 5. It does have a low speed of 250. I was talking about how this jigsaw for every, every rotation of the spindle on the headstock, you get one stroke on the jigsaw. And with the standard Mark V, your low end is 700 RPM. 700 strokes per minute on a die filer is a little fast. And so uh, if you're looking to sand uh, or to file metal or even plastics, you're gonna wanna slow that down. So you really have three options. There's three in there, trust me, three options. You can run this on a shopsmith that is equipped with a uh, Power Pro headstock, taking you down to 250. That's plenty slow. Um, you can use a shopsmith speed reducer, which is a little add-on device that most people see being used on the other end of the headstock um, for driving large drill bits or for um, for uh, powering things for turning large bowls and such but there is an interesting trick that you can mount it on the opposite side of the headstock and power your SPTs, your special purpose tools. So your bandsaw, the, uh, the jigsaw, the scroll saw, any of those kind of tools that you would like to slow down because the thing you're cutting is likely to either melt in the case of plastic or just need a little more time for cutting metal. And um, so that's another idea. Now, the last idea we're gonna cover in detail this coming weekend, and that is building yourself a speed reducer. There's, a, there's an article 60 years ago, probably, on how to do that, and we're gonna build one of these speed reducers together 
in this upcoming weekend and you'll see exactly what good it does and decide for yourself then which option makes the most sense. Um, Sassafras Valley, by the way, Sassafras Valley, uh, I've been watching your videos for a while. You've been commenting here. I have no idea what your name is. You may have noticed I like getting to know people. So, you know, give me an alias or something. I don't want to call you Sass or Frass. Anyway, in commenting about moving into my sister's shop, he said, uh, does she have room to store a couple more pieces of seldom used equi equipment asking for a friend? She's got some space down here. She really does. Um, uh, again, about my sister, um, I posted a, uh, a picture that she was picking up a shopsmith and some accessories. And uh, somebody commented, oh, you know, who talked her into it? I bet I know who talked her into it. Actually, no, it's her, it's her second Mark V. She is a very active woodworker. She uh, is more onto the construction side and uh, she's got this beautiful, maybe I'll, I'll post a picture if I can find it. She's got a beautiful uh, chicken coop that she built. It's the third chicken coop she has built, different homes that they've lived in. She's built um, uh, all kinds of furniture, uh, just loads of things for the, for the kids and the grandkids. Where I'm standing right now, and she's sworn me to secrecy, I'm not allowed to show you the interior of her house. Where I'm standing, I can see her workbench, and her workbench is actually four of the um, Harbor Freight wooden workbenches bolted together. She's got a huge surface. Um, she's also got a, a DeWalt table saw. She's got a, um, who's chop saw? She had a Hitachi chop saw, and I think she's got, give me a second. Yeah, her new one is a. Um, yeah, her new one is a compound sliding Dewalt. She's uh, she's got a track saw. She's got all kinds of tools. So no, I didn't convince her to do any of this. I do need to convince her to stand here with me and to be on video, and we'll we'll warm her up to that idea. Fred said, "Do you have information on that wall-mounted drill press?" So in one of my videos, I shared the fact that you could take any of the shopsmith tools and mount them on the wall using them as a, as a standalone, basically stationary drill press. I don't have any instructions on that. Uh, I have never done that. I have a couple friends who have done it. Um, I've given it a little bit of thought. And if, and if it were me doing it, I think what I would do is uh, I'd take the legs off the machine for sure. And I would build a, a, a plywood or a wooden base that would bolt using the the five screw holes that we use to attach the legs. Uh, I would additionally, so that would run the entire length of the machine. Imagine a piece of two by, let's say 12. Um, and then additionally, I would have in a few locations, some U-bolts drilled through and, and attaching that as well. Now on the wall, I would use a French cleat, you know, um, a piece of wood that's cut at a 45 degree angle, you could put that one piece on the back of, of that, another one on the wall, then you could easily hang it. At that point, I would dr uh, drive screws into studs if at all possible. Um, you're talking about a bunch of weight and then add to that weight any forces that you're going to have pulling on a handle while mortising is probably the worst thing you could do. So um, all those considerations, um, that's how I would do it. And maybe one of these days, we'll give that a shot. Enjoy. Independence Day, if you don't live in the United States, go ahead and enjoy your 4th of July too. I know you have one, it just isn't as exciting for you as it is for us. Make it a great week.